just about nine miles off the coast here. A 2,000 square mile oil slick threatening to devastate these ecologically fragile coastal wetlands. An environmental catastrophe so profound it has already prompted one Republican to change his mind about the benefits of 2008's extra simple damn the consequences rallying cry, drill baby drill. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger today taking the dramatic step of withdrawing his support for expanded offshore oil drilling off the coast of Santa Barbara, California. I see on TV the birds drenched in oil, the fishermen out of work, the massive oil spill, the oil slick destroying our precious ecosystem. They would not happen here in California. Here in the Gulf, high seas and strong winds have seriously hampered cleanup efforts. Many skimming boats were forced to return to shore, and flights carrying chemical dispersants were suspended today. And even though 52 miles of containment booms were deployed to protect the Gulf shoreline, Alabama's governor reported today that up to 80% of the booms have failed thanks to heavy weather, and that other Gulf states have similar problems. Having personally seen some of the types of booms that are being deployed here, I can tell you that they do not inspire confidence. The projected weather forecast for tomorrow is good. Southwest and north winds will help keep the slick off the shore. But scientists are concerned that the oil spill will reach what they call the loop current, which would push the slick toward the Florida Keys and up the east coast. Right now, fishing is suspended in the oil affected areas, including some fishing grounds, but certainly not all, on the coasts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. Those suspensions are for the next 10 days as U.S. officials investigate the impact on seafood. Scientists also examining the remains of 25 dead sea turtles that washed up on the Mississippi shore. They have found no sign of oil contamination as a cause of death for those turtles thus far. As to the efforts to cap the leak, gushing at least 210,000 gallons of crude a day, a British, petroleum, uh, British, British Petroleum started drilling on a relief well yesterday, but the Coast Guard says it will take at least 90 days to complete. It took 90 days to drill the initial well that is blown now. Drilling these relief wells is expected to be no easier. Tomorrow, BP hopes to roll out the first of three containment domes to be lowered on top of the three leak sites so the escaping oil can be funneled to the barges on the surface. They hope to have these containment domes operating within a week, even though they've never been tried before on a leak so big and so deep. A robotic submarine is pumping out chemical dispersant at the leak site, but BP is waiting for a visual overflight con submarine to try and install a shutoff valve at the end of one of the leak points today. No word yet on the results of that attempt. Both the CEO and the chairman of British Petroleum met with members of the Obama administration today. And BP and Transocean officials are slated to brief the House Oversight Committee on the spill tomorrow. Expect fireworks. Joining us now in Venice, Louisiana, is Brian Williams, of course, the anchor and managing editor of Nightly News. Brian, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me. What can you add to our reporting about the containment efforts thus far? Well, I can add uh, something I learned from the head of wildlife and fisheries here in Plaquemines Parish, uh, where we are. They have decided, and they've shared their plans with President Obama, to make a beachhead, to string together a daisy chain of barges, fishing boats, and booms, uh, however unready those booms, as you properly note, may be, to try to put up uh, a wall. The, the, this official said to me, we're not going to let this oil in our estuaries. They are uh, quite excited by the kind of slow eastward movement. We had a kind of happy coincidence today. This is it's being held offshore by currents and winds but as someone put it it's not like they're dodging a bullet it's like the bullet is getting bigger offshore yeah. this slick is the size of delaware there's no other way to put it we keep hearing that this deep water drilling itself is almost the cutting edge of man's technological capability it's like they talk about it as being similar as a technological feat to getting a man into space have we created a problem with that amazing technology, though, that we don't know how to solve? Does, does anybody know what the full impact is this, of this is going to be? Do we have advanced technology to try to stop it? I think we've, by definition, reached the outer limits of that technology. Yeah. By the way, we have done bugs in Louisiana the greatest favor by turning <laughs> on lights. Uh, th this is their their happiest hab habitat. But I think we've reached the edge. You're going to drill a mile down. You have a blowout preventer mm -hmm. that that has so far been prevented from stopping this at the wellhead. 
Um, I said tonight at the end of our broadcast, people are justifiably upset that the country that won World War II uh, sent persons to the moon and for that matter, you know, came up with the iPod, can't, even though it's a mile down, can't stop a leak in an oil well. And, and that's justifiable frustration because there is a huge time bomb off the coast of, of, of Louisiana. Politically and strategically, obviously the decision made in the wake of the Exxon Valdez disaster that an oil company that spills is responsible for the cleanup. Right. We hear when government officials talk to us about that fact, and we're going to have the EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson on with us in just a moment, we hear almost an admission that the oil companies know more than the regulators. Almost an admission that the, 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 on, the, on the company side of it, there's, that's where the real expertise lies. And, and the, the government officials that are supposed to be overseeing the companies when they do this may be at a technological under, uh, uh, disadvantage. Uh, is that something that can ever be remedied? Is that, in fact, the same problem that we've got on Wall Street with the SEC trying to regulate derivatives they don't understand? And we just came out of an administration, and a Republican friend reminded me today, he said, tell all your Democratic friends, when we appointed members of industry, former members of industry as regulators, in some cases it's because only those who have walked the walk drilled the wells, been down, uh, know from what it's like to drill a mile down under the surface of the water, uh, can know best how to turn around, know the industry and trade secrets. A side issue probably, but this is terribly urgent. And the lessons learned here, um, this could be, as you've noted, a disaster exceeding that of the Valdez. You spent so much time covering uh, Katrina. When you think about this same area, Plaquemines Parish, so devastated by Katrina, not just New Orleans, but these, uh, these low-lying parishes as well. Can you get a sense, can you start to estimate, just from being here, talking to people who've been through both of these disasters, about the, comp the comparative scale? Well, I'll tell you, I keep thinking, after Katrina, people could still work. This may, um, all these shrimpers, can't work. That's what they do. It's such a noble, incredible profession. When they go in season, they go seven, five to seven days out at a time, 24-7. Um, and no one thinks about them when ordering shrimp cocktail at a New York restaurant. But this is what makes Gulf shrimp. It's what makes it the best in the world. These, these people are the best in the world at it. So this is going to be a, a slower Katrina. Uh, people, by the way, are already, you know, uh, uh, tiring and, and moving on because this is like a like a slow moving hurricane taking its time offshore. It's getting bigger yeah. during that period. So I think this is going to have a, a colossal effect that if it hits the tip of one estuary, uh, you've seen already the, the wildlife around here catastrophic. There's a reason Teddy Roosevelt used to come down here. The connectivity of the ecosystems Absolutely. down here is one of the things we want to, we're able to go out today with a, a, a sport fisherman who showed us some of the areas that he fishes and talking about the connectivity of those estuaries that you really can't isolate one thing from another right. down here. It's so it's so, it's terrifying and incredibly impressive. Uh, Brian Williams, thank Thanks you so for much for your time. Me. Appreciate uh, it. Good luck with our friends yeah, here. Yeah, uh, well, they're all on union wages, so they're yeah. making a kill in here. Okay. It's great. The disaster started 50 miles out at sea with a deadly explosion, and then within two days it got much worse, a mile beneath it. It was unclear at the start exactly how bad this oil spill was going to be, but was and is the response aggressive enough? The head of the Environmental Protection Agency, Lisa Jackson, joins us next to try to clarify. Plus, we went out today to see for ourselves what's at risk here and to talk to some of the folks who make a living on these waters about what they most want to happen in this response right now. Our special show on the disaster in the Gulf continues live from Venice, Louisiana. Please do stay with us.